Hey everybody, my name is Jayan Sharma. Welcome to this quick video. Uh, I hope to share some of the updates of Adobe Lightroom Classic. And uh, I was I was dreaming of these features uh, over the recent months, ever since uh, I started using masking. Uh, so Adobe calls this the June 2022 release and the version number is 11.4. And without further ado, let's dive in and see what those amazing updates and features are. So I use the Lightroom Classic, and uh, as you can see, the June 22 update is uh, version 11.4. They have about three, four major updates and some small minor updates as well. The first one is what they call easily adjust the preset intensity in your photographs. So let's go back to my Lightroom, and I want to show you how this setting has taken place and how it makes a lot of difference to the photos right now. I've just imported some photographs. In fact, these were shot using my phone, the JPEGs, not much of a, a raw file here. Doesn't matter for this uh, uh, learning. So let's go ahead and enter the develop module. I'm just pressing the letter D to enter the develop module, as you can see here. In that, you, ha you have the presets panel here, right? So let's go ahead and select some black and white preset. We'll call that black and white one for the lack of, you know, um any other interest right now we just want to see how presets work or we could even go and toggle between the other one and select the sepia which is bw3 if you chart an image in the 1970s and printed it this is how it would look like on the print after 40 50 years now the thing is after this preset is set we earlier could do nothing but go and make manual changes that is like you can change the contrast brightness all of these manually now like for example let's say i can increase the contrast of this i can decrease the brightness of this and do all of those things but instead let's say reset this photograph i'll go to bw3 again and let's say okay let me go ahead and select some more higher intensity presets like for example um okay let me select this one it has a lot of greens now i want this preset but let's say I do not want so much intensity of this preset. So welcome the new preset amount slider. So what this does here, if you can observe here, the preset slider allows us to decrease or increase the intensity of what's going on. If you increase the intensity, you can see it's getting a lot more grainier and it's much more gaudy and ugly right now. If you do it too less, it may not even be visible as a preset. So you can just increase or decrease the intensity. Let's go ahead and select BW1 or BW3, for example, um, and decrease or increase the intensity so that you can show this change right on the photograph. Welcome to this new feature, right? Because this is something which makes sure we apply the preset and also can in, uh, decide what should be the intensity of this feature. So that's the number one change or welcome modification in Lightroom Classic. Now, the most important change is something which is the artificial intelligence usage in masking as we saw in the previous update. So let's go back to Lightroom. I'm just going to reset this photograph. I do not want um, to apply anything right now. So if you see this photograph right now, let's say I want to color the sky a little more bluish. So I could go to the masking feature as I showed you in the last preset um I, I beg your pardon last update of lightroom so now i can select sky and in the sky it applies all these uh, areas in this red color to just mark the sky for us now let's say i wanted to make the sky a little more bluish decrease the exposure a little to the sky and maybe increase the contrast a little and then say done and you can just press this key to check the before and after that is the slash key to check backslash key to check the before and after and you can see how this image has uh, been modified by using masking which is especially using artificial intelligence if you know masking has not colored the trees blue the mysore palace blue it's only selected the sky whatever it thinks belongs to the sky in this photographs has selected the sky if you can go back to masking you can select the sky you can switch that off and see how this is and that is what is uh, masking which we already know there's no change to this right so according to lightroom let's go to the detailed view of this particular modifications or adjustments now what we could do is earlier if we moved a setting from one photograph to another photograph for example let's say we love this let's go back to the loop view we love this photograph but we go to the next photograph and we want to apply the exact same uh, modifications we did on that one to this photograph 
then even if you went ahead and copied settings from here and pasted it here it would bring everything let me just increase the thumbnail size it would bring everything from the first photograph except the mark masking feature because if you understand the masking is not just a cut and paste from one photo to another let's go ahead and open this photo if you see the palace is on the left here if you see the palace is rightly moved to the right here now if you copy settings from that photo and paste it here it would patch incorrectly against the sky right so this was not allowed in the previous version of lightroom where if you copy masking from one photograph and paste it on another except the masking feature every other setting would copy now when you go ahead and how do you copy files um, settings from one photo to another if you still don't know select the first photograph hold the control on windows and the command on mac and second one that is the second photograph now you get this setting here in that i want you to go and select sync settings it opens this dialog right now earlier masking was disabled because it couldn't you know intelligently apply that setting on a new photograph now you can select mask one which is the sky that we put uh, uh, okay let's do one thing let's go ahead to this photograph and excuse me let's go to this photograph select develop again go to the masking just for us to understand we can rename this to sky so that we understand this a little better so i'm going back to the loop view selected this photograph held shift selected this photograph even control command is okay then sync settings you got the sky here that's what i want to illustrate masking selected with the sky and then when you say synchronize boom what lightroom does it takes a few seconds and applies masking to this photograph just like this photograph and mind you it's not going to ask you where's the sky in this if you go to develop module of this particular photo go to the masking feature and just hover over the masking you will see it's exactly on the sky of the second photograph whereas on the first photograph the masking was completely in a different area in the photograph isn't this really really saving a lot of time for us if we want to mask multiple photograph but has small changes in the composition and how you can apply this to multiple photograph that's an amazing change and i welcome it with wholehearted uh, approach to uh, my workflow of how i can use photographs uh, uh, and edit them using the masking feature now um let's talk about the next update um in in the masking itself what they allow us to do is something which is very interesting which is called invert mask now ever since i started doing masking right if i went to this photograph this is all the sky but let's say i want to darken the mysore palace or i want to brighten it i want to color correct it or do whatever then i should have added another mask here and set select subject right so then it's going to go ahead and paint the whole mysore palace and you can mouse over it and that's the mysore palace if you want you can uh, reset the sliders automatically next time here so then let's go ahead and make sure no changes are affecting on that including the correct color temperature now this is the sky and uh, sorry this is the palace and this is the sky okay so now this is what we used to do i'm just going to go ahead and select this and delete this now what we could do is i don't want just the subject i want everything else but the sky so according to this um software according to the intelligence of lightroom the palace is the subject the sky is of course the sky but what about the tree and the foreground and the lawn and the fence and the, all of that so welcome to lightroom's new feature which is what is called invert mask now once you add a mask you can actually go ahead and invert it it seems so let's say i selected a sky and now i can go ahead and select this invert button here and it inverts to everything else except the sky there's a difference between selecting the subject and selecting the sky and inverting it i hope you understand the difference now everything except the sky has been selected in the first mask we'll call this uh, let's say we'll call this rename this and say uh, sky invert okay so now you understand the difference this is just the sky this is everything else but the sky so when you go to sky invert let's say you want to color correct it you want to make this a little um uh, warmer you want to increase the shadows you want to open up the shadows here you want to increase the contrast do whatever you want it's only working on all the pixels ex except the sky amazing new welcome change in lightroom it's the invert mask feature so that's something you should all be looking forward to in your photographs now what other changes are there in lightroom let me go ahead and quickly check the rest of the changes are pretty small but i'll still mention what they are it seems there's a new crop overlay let's go ahead and see what that is let's go to the develop module again let's say i want to crop this image i'm going to press develop module that is the d letter then i'm pressing the letter r which takes us to the crop overlay now this is the rule of thirds crop overlay 
I don't know, many of you may not know, if you press the letter O, it will start toggling different crop overlays. Like for example, this is a different crop overlay. This is a different crop overlay. This is one more. But the newest crop overlay has been of the five, uh, one is to five uh, composition. That is basically um, one fifth um, rows and columns here. This is the newest overlay it seems. And this is something which some people love to use. And if they want, they can go ahead and use that. So that's one of the newest um, uh, additions to Lightroom. Then there are some things that we cannot see, but we have to believe it's happening. Better preview management. It's going to, um, you know, manage the uh, preview files better to manage disk space. It seems then, of course, GPU acceleration for export and uh, stuff like that, which of course we cannot see through our naked eye, but it's something which is happening in the background. Now, loop info overlay options. So what the, what does that mean? Like for example, earlier you could go ahead and press the letter I, and you'd see these information of the photograph, like the raw file, what was the exposure, and all of that. This used to happen in library module. Now you can just go ahead and select D, that is the develop module, and you can still see this. And you can toggle between images in the develop module or in the library module, and you can still see loop view information, which is just a little handy information to have while you are editing images. Now, faster smart previews purging. It's not going to take so much time to purge smart previews. Do you know what is purging? If you don't know, you should definitely spend some time learning Lightroom. I do have a 10 and a half hour Lightroom course with all of these features explained beautifully. Get in touch with me if you still don't know a lot of these features. These are modifications and updates to the software, but you need to first learn what was there before. Now, there are some more local support for Indians. It doesn't matter, Norwegian and Polish, and then there are new premium presets, it seems. So overall, I think Lightroom is building a case for more and more photographers to benefit from features that only Photoshop had in the past. Now, you don't need to worry about the lack of uh, Photoshop knowledge because a lot of Lightroom's capabilities are improving. Like, for example, people used to love Photoshop because of layers, because they could do masking and all of that. Now, all of those are in Lightroom itself, which is why spend enough time to master Lightroom and you don't need to touch Photoshop if you do normalization and uh, processing in a different way, unless you do uh, digital manipulation for which you may need Photoshop. But otherwise, most of the work photographers like me need, Lightroom can take care of and more. So this is what is the latest update of June 2022. My name is Jayan Sharma. If you want to learn Lightroom, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to share some insights on our 10 and a half hour course, which has raw files, which has instructional way of doing things where you do it along with me because I share my raw files with you and I am happy to help you master and learn Lightroom. Take care. Thank you very much.